Hello, our beautiful people. It's Felicia here, and welcome back to Beauty Within. Today's episode is gonna get bloody. But don't worry, guys, because everything I'm about to tell you is 100% natural, and it's our period. Yep, you heard right, our monthly female friend, the menstruation cycle, otherwise known as the monthly bleed. <laughs> well, I guess it's monthly if you're healthy, but we'll talk about all that very soon. Ready for something interesting? Because I'm going to show you guys how your own period blood, yep, the color of our blood, can actually determine the state of our hormones. And by the time our little period talk is over today, you guys are going to know the menstrual cycle from the inside out <laughs> and how fluctuations in estrogen and progesterone levels can really be used to predict certain skin changes, breakouts and acne, dryness, oiliness, all that jazz. And on top of that, we're going to break down which skincare products you want to concentrate on and be using in different weeks of your cycle because it changes from week to week. And we really want to accentuate the products that we're using and make sure we're using it at the right time. And finally, I have some myths to debunk that will make you question everything you might have thought you knew about your period. So grab yourself a nice cup of tea, whatever beverage, cozy up and relax and let's get into it. But today I have my strawberry flavor scented green tea. <laughs> There's more to your period than bleeding and, you know, checking your panties every five minutes to make sure they're not stained. Who hasn't experienced that, right? The little leakage. <laughs> I guess for the guys who are here, I'm sorry, this might be TMI. You can stay if you like. Anyway, we all know your period occurs every month, but what's actually happening in the body that's making you bleed this way? To put it simply, your period comes when you're not pregnant ixnay on the ignan prentai. My best pig Latin attempt. The ovaries located on either side of the woman's pelvis. These are the female reproductive organs that help to store our eggs. And during each menstrual cycle, so every month, one ovary is in charge of releasing an egg to be fertilized. And this only happens once the sperm meets with the egg. And from here, two things can happen. One is, yay, your egg's fertilized. It attaches itself to the uterine wall. Nine months later, ding, ding you got a baby. <laughs> Congrats! The second thing that can happen is that the egg is left unfertilized and it disintegrates and the thick lining of our uterus that supports the pregnancy process actually starts to shed itself. Ta-da! That shedding leads to our period and that's when we know our period's arrived. And when you look down, there be blood. <laughs> and what you see isn't just blood. There's also a mix of tissue and mucus that drains from our uterus through the cervix and the vaginal canal and out of our body. Don't go chasing water for bloody waterfalls. So in a nutshell, that's what's happening. Now let's break it down to the menstrual cycle phases. All right, so this is some dense blood talk. Let's just take a sip. Okay. As we've mentioned, your period or the bleeding part that we see is only one phase of the entire cycle. So to make things easier to understand, you can kind of think of the stages as the four seasons because we go through four phases. And as you know, each season reflects a different mood and energy. Phase one is menstruation. And this is usually when you would slow things down. You know, you move at a glacial pace maybe, but it's also when you would find time to be there for yourself. Kind of like you're a bear in hibernation catching the so still in stage one, after the bleeding is done, we enter the second part of the follicular phase known as the proliferative phase. And this is when the uterine lining starts to rebuild itself and thicken up again. And you're experiencing your inner spring or the season of rebirth and cleansing. <laughs> so to get your creative juices flowing and go out and explore more because that's when we're like out of hibernation. Next is the ovulation, which is kind of like summertime, hot, hot, hot. I'm feeling hot, hot, hot. Which is where your egg is released. It's ripe and ready to be fertilized or go through the stages of not being fertilized again and get the period. And this is probably when you're feeling fired up and confidence at its max. So it's time to push yourself. Maybe you can think about socializing more and really work on those relationships you have, whether it's with your significant other 
<laughs> your friends or even family. Finally, we enter the luteal phase, which can be known as fall. And it's also known as the premenstrual phase because it occurs right before your next period. And it's usually here that we're winding down from the ovulation peak. You're kind of feeling like you're ready to jump back into your little cocoon or your burrito. It's in that middle transitional kind of time. So now that we know more about the inner workings of our female menstrual cycle, let's move on to our hormones or more specifically the female sex hormones. So there's two main hormones that we have, which are known as estrogen and progesterone. And they both play a part in making sure the female body is healthy and running smoothly. And estrogen steps up during puberty and it's really important in female development, like the growth of your breastuses and the widening of our hips. And it also helps to regulate the menstrual cycle. And then progesterone is actually made after ovulation and focuses on preparing the womb for the potential pregnancy by the thickening of the uterine lining. And as you go through the different phases of your menstrual cycle, these levels will rise and fall, which then leads to to some great and some not so great skin changes. So let's break down what's happening at each phase of our menstrual cycle and what happens to our hormones. The first is menstruation. Your estrogen and progesterone levels at this point will stay low during your period. And it's here that you'll see that your skin will start to clear up after those really stressful, pimply, sometimes like cystic times. Oh man. They're so rough. And you kind of wake up and you're like, why do I live? But your skin's not off the hook yet because during this phase, it will also tend to look a little dry, maybe a little dull, like that plant that you forgot to water. I'm sorry. So during the menstruation period, we want to stick to gentle and soothing and calming ingredients because we're already going through a lot, you know, down there. So my favorite soothing ingredients are calendula, aloe vera, centella asiatica, green tea, and also mugwort, as well as hyaluronic acid to deal with any dullness, any ashiness, and any signs of dehydration on the skin. So my favorite hyaluronic acid is the Neod Multimolecular Hyaluronic Complex, and this just really helps to restore any transepidermal water loss, and it's just very gentle, very lightweight. It's almost like water and just works wonders for any skin type. And then the Centella Asiatica, there's so many great products, but the one from Purito, there's the serum, there's the toner that I really love, and that's suitable for all skin types, any skin condition, very soothing. There's also a Misha toner with Calendula that also works very similarly to really soothe, calm, and hydrate. So then we move on to the next phase, and you might be thinking, when is my skin ever going to look bright and glowy again? Don't worry, because things are going to look up real soon. So you'll see that the estrogen levels will slowly rise and peak right before of Population. Estrogen is the hormone for clear, bouncy, and really like radiant skin. And that's because it helps to promote collagen production. And we know that collagen and youth and plumpness go hand in hand. So prepare for that glow, girlfriend, girlfriend. And one of the reasons why your skin might be so clear and glowing at this phase is because cell regeneration is at its peak, which means your dead skin is being sloughed off and revealing that new, fresh and glowing skin. So at this phase, it might be a really good idea to pop out your gentle exfoliants like your AHAs to really help slough off any extra dead skin, which might be clogging the pores and really complement what's going on in your body. There's the ordinary lactic acid, there's the some by me, 30 days, you know, with the centella, as well as the AHA, BHA, and PHA. There's also stronger exfoliating products like the Bliss exfoliating pads or the Peter Thomas Roth. It's like the pumpy toner and that really helps to brighten up the skin as well and like turn over the dead skin so it's not stuck in the pores. Remember, you don't want to overdo the chemical exfoliants. That's just horrifying. <laughs> so in this ovulation phase, you want to once again kind of stick to your gentle, soothing, best friend type of ingredients <laughs> that you can use at any time really. And just when you think your skin is going to stay glowing, acne free forever, the luteal phase begins. <laughs> boom, boom, boom.
So what happens here is the estrogen levels start to fall and progesterone levels rise. And when this happens, it leads to things like clogged pores, increased sebum production, and what does that spell? Acne, acne. And this is kind of why, you know, like leading up to your period, we always say that we start to break out. This is the phase that we're in. So in the luteal phase, you want to focus on the products that can really help you prevent inflammation and breakouts to make sure that you get a really thorough cleanse. And I really love the Then I Met You cleansing balm as the two-step process of double cleansing. Then also, there's like so many, so, so, so many <laughs> salicylic acid products from cleansers to masks to toners to serums. So this is a time when you can really switch up and incorporate those products again. There's the Ordinary Salicylic Acid Mask with squalane. So it helps to draw out impurities and excess sebum. But at the same time, make sure that the skin is replenished with the squalane. And another one is also Paula's Choice. They have the wonderful, the cult favorite BHA toner. It's in that black bottle, which I absolutely love. I always go back to that one. And one of my favorite cleansers is the La Roche-Posay medicated gel cleanser that I've used for a really long time. 2% salicylic acid, which is perfect in a cleanser. This is also the time that you can break out the acne treatments. If you do have active breakouts that you just wanna, you know, help dry along or acne patches, Cosrx, Zit Sticker, absolutely fantastic for this time. So because you might be using a lot of, you know, acne prone ingredients, you also want to make sure you're calming that with very soothing ingredients like Centella Asiatica, Calendula, and even things like green tea or ECGC antioxidants. And this is also the time that the foods that you eat will make the most difference. So if you find that especially sugar triggers a lot of inflammation in your body, this is when you want to absolutely stay away from sugar and load up on all your cruciferous vegetables because that will really help to regulate your hormones so that the breakouts aren't as bad. Trust me guys, this makes the world of difference. So you know there's like a law of the universe when things get really tough, really aggravated, it will come down again. You know, you throw a ball up, it's gotta come down. That's what happens after the luteal phase, you'll get your period and everything starts to chill out and relax again. So now going on to your period blood color. Mmm, <laughs> delicious. And the texture, <laughs> even better. <laughs> Drink to that. Mmm. <laughs> Our body is all about showing us signs, right? Acne is a sign to tell us that our body is inflamed, our hormones are out of whack, but another way is through our period and looking at the color. So let's put in our spectacles to look at the color of our period. And I know you're probably like, Ew. I don't wanna look at that, but this is just your body communicating with you that something is off or not right, potentially, if it falls into a certain color category. So I actually watched this video with Alyssa Vitti and that video is mind boggling. I will leave it below. And she talks a lot about the menstrual cycle, hormones, diet, everything. And she says that the color and texture of your period can say so much about what's going on inside. So let's take a little look. A normal, healthy period color should resemble something like cranberry red. And the texture is kind of like Goldilocks, somewhere in the middle, not too thin and not too thick. And if you see this, you're in luck because your hormone levels are exactly where they should be. But your blood isn't necessarily going to stay that way for the entire week, right? It also goes through different color changes. And when you're changing <laughs> the product of choice that you use down there and you notice brown or even like black coffee, color, your blood has been oxidized. And the reason why it changes to that brownie color is because it's been sitting in your uterus for a while, right? It's been a week, guys, it's been a week. And in some cases, this might even be leftover blood from your previous cycle, which is actually kind of nasty. <laughs> And usually this isn't a problem, but if it's streaky or spotty, this could indicate a low progesterone, which can cause abnormal bleeding and even missed periods. This is actually what happened to me two weeks ago when I was in Australia. It came out very spotty and brown, and that was it. It was gone over like a day. And I was like, oh my God, what's happening? So definitely my progesterone levels were low, which means my diet and my nutrition levels were not on point. So, you know, the body is just sending you signs. It's like, 
signs. So if your progesterone levels are either too low or too high, both of these extremes can cause acne. Another variation that you might see is if you look down and your period color is like a dark purpley color with clots in it, this is a sign that you're high in estrogen levels and too much estrogen can cause problems with your period as well as other health concerns including thyroid issues and a risk for breast cancer after menopause. So maybe you're thinking having a short period or a light period is great. <laughs> save your pants, save money, save unwanted spillages, but this isn't the case for your body. A pink menstrual blood like pink lemonade or just really light colors can indicate a low level of estrogen and that's not good either. So we don't want either extreme. We don't want it so thick and dark and bloody and we also don't want it too light. While we were doing research, we were like, why didn't we get educated on this so much earlier on as females, right? It's something that's natural that happens to all of us, but we know literally like 2% of it. But here are two myths that we specifically picked out that I think will blow your mind. First one is that cramps are normal. Ah, the classic get yourself into fetal position and complain because you were in so much pain. You know, take a day off school, take a day off work. We all like to think that we've gone through the symptoms of PMS, like you're easily agitated, you're cramping, you don't know whether to eat, whether you're hungry or not because it's like kind of throbbing. But the truth is, you're not even supposed to get cramping. All right guys, listen very carefully. This is how it works. So we have a thing called PGE 1, 2, and 3. PGE 1 and 3 is in control of relaxing our uterus. PGE 2 is in control of contractions and you know, the cramping sensations that we feel. So if you look at the three, we have two two against one. Our body is made in a way that's supposed to help us alleviate any pain even during our period. If we're healthy, we're stress-free, we're eating all the right foods, your body is already designed in a way that is helping you and facilitating no pain because it's two against one, majority rules. We can go into this a little more in the next video if you guys want to know, but just keep in mind that if you have cramping, this is signaling that you're not feeding your body right and it's affecting the hormones that are going on in your body, affecting the testosterone as well as the estrogen. Myth number two is birth control. So a lot of people think that birth control will help fix all your period woes. You might be thinking, I have such a heavy flow, I always get cramped, I don't want this, so I'll just go on the pill because that's what we might have heard, right? And even though gynecologists sometimes suggest that you do take birth control, if either you get really bad acne or your menstruation is just too much to handle, it might not be the best idea. You can kind of think of the pill as, yes, it can work, but it's more of just like a band-aid quick fix because through taking it, you can actually worsen the symptoms in the long run and make things worse inside. And that's because it has synthetic hormones that really mess with your body's microbiome and it strips you of all the essential and required vitamins as well as the nutrients and minerals. So we're not saying here that the pill is absolutely the worst because some people, you know, if you've gone to your doctor and they say that you have some condition that requires you to take the pill, then obviously you just have to work through that. But we just want to highlight that even if you're on the pill or you're maybe thinking about going on it because of these skin issues, there are always ways before you get to that stage, even with Accutane and things like that, because in the long term, that might not be the best situation for your body. So that's the T, my friends, on our period. Or should I say, that's the P. <laughs> So we hope now it all makes a little bit more sense about how our menstrual cycle works. And at each phase, there's certain things to highlight. It could explain why we go through different moods, that we prefer certain things at different stages. It's all very normal. We just wanted to break this down in a way that made you more aware of what's going on in your body and what you can do and, you know, stress less about it. So make sure if you enjoyed this topic and this video, you give it a thumbs up, leave a comment on any questions you might have. We'll definitely be touching more on this topic because I think it's just so important. We'll leave all our reference points below. Make sure you check out Alyssa Vitti's video because I was just 
mind boggled and flabbergasted by that video. And it's just so enlightening, so enlightening, the more you know. So yes, we will see you in the next video. Bye. Bye. But more importantly, how to make sure that your hormone, hormones, hormones, okay. Mmm. So good. <laughs> Hello, my little researcher reindeer. So as we've mentioned, your period or the bleeding part, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can't move in this dress. <laughs> so this is the time that you'll probably feel most confident. There's a fly. Okay. Okay. So that's the phases. <laughs> that's the phases. Okay, so. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like a horse. It's like. <laughs> I'm like so dehydrated from talking about, period.